You know, Charlie, when I think about the great football teams, I think about Bear Bryant in Alabama. Yep. I right. think about uh, Daryl Royal and the Texas Longhorns. I think about Eric Parsegan and the Fighting Irish in Notre Dame. Woody Hayes, the Ohio State Buckeyes, they always come to mind. You're right. Maybe right. Mike Ditka, 85 Chicago Bears that won the bundle down in New Orleans. But there is one football team that is etched so deep in my memory that I felt the need to actually talk about it and educate the younger people about just how great this football team was. This goes back a mere 48 years, 1965. New Trier was football. You're right, Chet. We yeah, absolutely 1965. were. Chuck, don't step on the host. 1965. New Trier football 1965 is brought to you by Homer's Ice Cream on Green Bay Road, by Steinway Drugs, and by the makers of Studebaker. New Trier kicks off to the Morton East Mustangs, and immediately the Indians make their presence known coming up with a fumble recovery in plus territory. From there, it doesn't take long for NT to strike. Watch Steve Yates out of the tailback position, roll to his right, find an open number 11, Steve Hummel, and the Indians are on the board. Big play, you better believe it. Steve Yates to Steve Hummel. Hey, I want to speak to all you greasers out there, all you people who are carrying 1.25 GPAs. Are you in danger of being arrested by the Winnetka Police Department for auto theft? Then have I got the place for you. Make it his point to stop by Chris's Diner, just down the road from the New Trier campus. Enjoy that big cup of black coffee. Drag on the camels as you think about life beyond New Trier, which will probably feature either the U.S. Marines or a stint in Cook County Jail. Hey, when you want to enjoy breakfast, lunch, or dinner, there's only one place to go here in the New Trier area, and that's Chris's Diner. Mention my name, Chet Kopic, and who knows, you may wind up with a 1.5. GPA. Now back to game action. Look at the determination of Andy Coe coming up with a big stop behind the line of scrimmage. Coe, the veteran, who later went on to play at Southern California. Now Morton East on the pitch. And the stop is made by Gunlock. Terrific play by Gunlock, but note the pursuit by number 56, Bill Shaw. Now it's time to get Steve Hummel back on the screen as we continue our look at Nutria Football 1965. This is truly one of the great plays turned in by the Indians the entire year. Now, follow Hummel as he makes the catch, avoids a tackle, runs to his right, takes time out to stop for a sandwich and a beer at Sewell's in Northfield, and advances the ball up to midfield. From there, after a change of possession, the Mustangs are forced to punt. Ball was taken by Lawler, and uh, sadly on this particular play, Lawler was tripped up by a blade of grass. But not for long. Watch this. McFadden, tough physical running right up the gut. Number 20. He's going to go all the way to the house. Dutrier is on the board, and the Indians are making hay. The PAT is successful. Hey, on Friday nights, there's only one place to go here in the greater Dutrier area. What are we talking about? It's where Charlie Southwick and I always make it a point to stop. The fabulous Rolling Stones, where my favorite band is, of course, the house band, the Delvets. Chet, I love the Delvets and their version of Johnny Be Good. Fabulous. How about that for inspiration? Chuck is so fired up right now, he's going to camp out at the uh, Rolling Stone beginning on Friday morning. Hey, make it a point. Only two bucks admission at the door. If there's kids there from Niles West or Niles East, chances are you might get rolled. But you'll always enjoy music at the fabulous Rolling Stone. Man, that Chuck, he is funky, but not nearly as funky as this short yardage touchdown by the Indians. Here is our Steinway's play of the week. Botched fumble snap. Steve Hummel, extend those hands. The ball goes skyward. Now, Steve tries to make something out of nothing, and sadly, it winds up going absolutely nowhere. One of the biggest plays of this or any other year, the great pursuit by Southwood, the pick by the veteran out of Howard Junior High School. Off times compared to Dick Butkus, it's Dave Me who takes the ball to the house. Let's see you the second time around. Keep your eyes on the pressure turned in by number 65, Charlie Southwick. And once again, the ball is picked up by David Me. Me realizes he's got nothing but daylight. Come on, Dave, take your time because I'm out of ad libs. Dave, me, 5'11, 168 pounds. My gosh, I could, I could walk the 60 yard dash in 4'8 for heaven's sake. Dave, take your time. We've got all day. This is your moment of glory, Dave. 
Touchdown, Newford. The big play of the pick turned in by Dave Mee for the Nutria Indians. I want to talk to you guys out there about White's Drug Store. You know White's. Refusing to sell adult material since 1926. But it's Friday night, and you know you need that prophylactic. There's only one place to go to get that rubber, and that is White's Drug Store. Well, I personally wouldn't go out with anyone who didn't buy a prophylactic from White's. John May perpetually underrated with a nice catch for short yardage. We see it a second time. You know that May delights head coach Walter Ashenbach. From there, Dick Williamson, number 16, comes up with a sack. Once again, Morton East with a football. Rolling to their right. And again, they're submerged. It's Bill Shaw, big number 56, later a prominent downtown Chicago attorney. A tremendous play as Hummel throws downfield to Beal for positive yardage. Now, this may well be our 1965 Nutria play of the game. Yates to Steve Hummel, who somehow has the glue fingers and manages to make that reception. Now, once again, the pitch to big Bob Gunlock, the 245-pound tight end who later matriculated at Louisiana State. From there, Lawler with a sweep around the right side. Now, big play coming up. Steve Yates sets himself. It's vertical time as he throws downfield to Beal, complete inside the Proviso East 20-yard line. Ah, let's all shed a tear for homecoming. Let's think about those marvelous moments. Tri-ship dances, great parties, hanging out at White's Drugstore, mobile classrooms. It brings a tear to my eye when I think about my alma mater, good old Lutrier High School. Back to live game action. Steve Yates throws over the middle. Once again, his target is big, John May. Dramatically underrated wide receiver. Now, watch Don Williamson. That play is going nowhere because of Williamson's tremendous extension as he comes up with the pass block. And this crowd here at John Coyne Memorial Stadium couldn't be more appreciative. By the way, WNTH Radio would like to remind you that the Vietnam conflict will end sometime around 1973. Additionally, WNTH, as a public service, reminds you that Chicago will have a 708 area code in approximately 1993. But now let's talk about good eating. You know, Charlie here, he's got that big appetite, just like I do. When I want to really get the feedback on where do I go, I stop over at Lake Avenue and Green Bay Road to enjoy Walker Brothers Kentucky Fried Chicken. I know it may cause me heart damage. I know. It may do a number on my blood pressure, but the fact of the matter is, I can't get over that great finger looking good taste of Walker Brothers Kentucky Fried Chicken. As a courtesy, we bring you this telephone poll to remind you that by 1993, the state of Illinois will have a 708 area code. Nice tackle by John MacArthur on the reception. Number 24, we see the second time. John MacArthur, a bona fide athlete, you better believe it. Now, big tackle turned in by Woods, number 12. Outstanding. Look how he wraps up on this play. That's the way the coaches, of course, like to see it. Right now, I want to talk to you about something that my friend Charlie does on a regular basis. Isn't it time for you to visit the ghetto? Isn't it time for you to visit the other side of the tracks? Make it a point to stop by downtown Northfield. Yes, that's where I was raised. I love to stop by Sewell's with the hamburgers, the ham sandwiches, absolutely melt in your mouth. Hey, if you want to see how the other half lives, if you want to see what true charity is all about, as my friend Charlie will tell you, I want you to make it a point to stop at Sewell's and stop at Northfield. Hey, while you're there, be a sport. Leave a couple of bucks. Northfield ain't Winnetka, and it sure as hell ain't Kenilworth. The diminutive Steve Hummel, oft times compared to former Chicago Bear great Willie Gallimore. Rolling to his opposite side, throws complete for a touchdown. We have to see this play a second time. What great athleticism turned in by number 11 from Will Mapp. Now watch big McAvoy, Mike McAvoy, running to his right, finds space, carries the ball up and into Evanston territory. We watch it a second time. McAvoy, number 16, six foot four, 245 pounds of grit and muscle, frequently compared to Cleveland's Jimmy Brown. And then our final play of the afternoon. Lawler, rolling to his right, throws complete to Beal. A tremendous over-the-shoulder catch. 
Why can't we go back in time? Why can't New Trier play the Evanston Wildcats? Would I give to see that ball game one more time? Or would I give to see New Trier run up 60 points on that vaunted Niles East defense? What I give to hear the Turtles sing, it ain't me, babe. I guess all you can do is reflect. Think about how great those moments were. I hope you've enjoyed our presentation of Nutria Football in 1965. The following, of course, is a John Coyne Sports International production brought to you by John Coyne and by American Taxi. Now, before we say goodbye, there are several people I really would like to acknowledge. People who were instrumental in making this video the happening it has truly been. First of all, the role of Chuck Southwick was played by Chuck Southwick. The role of Nancy Southwick was played in Academy Award fashion by Nancy Southwick. I'm Chuck Kopic. Once again, we hope you enjoyed it. On three. One, two, three. We love John Coyne. John, we did this for you, baby. Now enjoy the damn thing and buy a round of booze for the whole house, will you? <laughs> We're out of here. <laughs> If you live in the suburbs of Chicago or even visit from time to time, you just cannot miss American Taxi, a virtual parade of them at the upper and lower level at O'Hare and the pickup lane at Midway. And if you lived in Northbrook or Glenview way back in 1976, you probably saw a couple of new entrants to the suburban taxi market posted at their respective train stations. A classmate of mine from Nutria 66, John Coyne, was one of those first few drivers with a new company in America's bicentennial year. Over the years, John became half owner, and along with his brother Dan, New Trier class of 1968, built their enterprise into the ubiquitous presence you now see throughout the entire Chicago metropolitan area. Over 800 taxis carry the American taxi banner. Now, where do I come into the story? About a dozen years ago, I started working with John in American Taxi, including his sister Lori, New Trier class of 1969 on radio commercials informing the public of what a customer-friendly organization American Taxi truly is. So, I became the voice of American Taxi, a unique gig I enjoy doing to this day. In fact, I enjoy it more than I did a dozen years ago. I'll be promoting American Taxi as a sponsor of our WLS radio broadcasts of Notre Dame football. So from John, Dan, Lori, and all the staff and drivers of American Taxi Dispatch Incorporated, we hope you got as much pleasure out of this production as we all did in creating it. A great collaboration of old friends and classmates. We're sure, we hope, you won't soon forget. <laughs>